Good morning guys, how is it going? Mike coming back at you with another video uh, on college algebra here. Uh, this is another uh, redo uh, of one of our uh, earlier videos that were uh, previously uploaded, uh, but then were found to have been uploaded uh, with audio troubles. Uh, so we are once again providing live commentary uh, on a math video. Because if there's one thing that we all love, it's live commentary on math videos. <laughs> um, in our previous video, uh, we talked about uh, complex numbers, what those things look like, how do we write them, uh, and some of the basic operations uh, we can do with them. In this video, we're going to talk about quadratic equations. But what the heck is a quadratic equation? It's any equation that can be written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, where a, b, and c are all real numbers, uh, and a is not equal to uh, zero. We need a non-zero number in front of that x squared term uh, to make it a true uh, quadratic. And we're gonna talk uh, a few ways uh, about how we can solve uh, quadratic equations, but the first way, and probably the most common way that we solve uh, these equations is with the help of factoring and the zero product property. The zero product property says that if you have the product of two things equaling zero, then that means that either one of those things has to be zero. So if m times n equals zero, then either m equals zero or n has to uh, equal zero. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna factor a uh, quadratic uh, and then we are going to uh, set each of those factors equal to zero uh, and we're going to solve for x. This is something that many of you have uh, probably done uh, in some of your uh, previous math classes. Uh, this may be a bit of a uh, review for some, uh, but maybe for some of us this is more of a uh, brand new thing. So uh, first one up here, we want to solve x squared minus 11x plus 24 is equal to zero. So we want to try to break this thing down into two factors, uh, into the product of two factors, and then we're going to take each of those factors and we're going to set them equal to a big fat zero, and we're going to solve for x. So I have a, a nice quadratic here x squared minus 11x plus 24. Um, because it's x squared in each of my uh, binomials, uh, it's going to be an x and an x. It's the only way I can get a 1x squared. I need two numbers that will add up to negative 11 and multiply out to a positive 24. Um, now, the fact that it's plus 24 tells us that the signs in our uh, binomials are going to be uh, the same. Whatever that sign is, is the sign that's in front of my B value. So since there's a, a minus sign before that 11, that tells me that uh, we have minus signs going after both X's here. So now we need those two numbers that will multiply out to 24 uh, and add up to negative 11. And we find that if I have eight and three there, that gets me what I want. It doesn't matter which thing I put where, because it's the same. So x minus eight times x minus three is equal to zero. Now we use that zero product property. I'm gonna take each of these factors set them equal to zero on their own, and then I'm going to uh, solve for x. Uh, so uh, we have x minus eight. The eight came out a little funky. There we go. Uh, x minus eight is equal to, to zero. Uh, and then we also have x minus three is equal to uh, zero. And it's really uh, straightforward here uh, to solve for uh, each of these, you find that x is equal to 8 for the first one, and then you find that x is equal to 3 for the second one. So there we go. 
uh, we come, come up with our solutions uh, pretty easily uh, for that. Not all quadratic equa equations will be given to us already in that nice form of everything equaling zero. You may need to do some uh, shifting of terms uh, so that everything is on one side. And I would suggest that you shift terms uh, so that the leading, uh, or so that the number in front of your x squared is positive. Uh, make that positive because it's the nicest thing to uh, work with overall. So here, I'm going to uh, subtract two from each side, and that is uh, going to give me three x squared uh, plus five x minus two is equal to zero. Now, this is gonna be a little bit uglier to factor, but overall still not too bad. Um, we have three x squared uh, now, not just x squared, but it's still nice because when we come up with our factors, there's only one way we can get three x squared. We have to have one thing being a three x and the other thing being an x. It's the only way that we can come up with a three x uh, squared. This does make it a bit more involved and a bit more complicated when we have to come up with the other uh, numbers here. What's coming after the three x and what's coming after the x. Note that the coefficient, or uh, sorry, note that the sign in front of uh, my two there is a minus sign. That tells me that in these two factors here, one of them is gonna have a minus, the other one is going to have a plus. But the question is which one is which? I would need two numbers that multiply out to a negative two. Now, that's not too bad. There's only two ways we can get uh, numbers that multiply out to negative two. It's either positive one and negative two or negative one and positive two. And it may take a little bit of uh, trial and uh, error uh, to see uh, which one it is that you need. Uh, but what you're looking for is the negative one and the positive two, and the negative one goes in our first factor, and the positive two goes in our second factor. If you multiply these out, then you would get three x squared plus five x minus two. Set each of these factors equal to zero and solve for x. I think it's pretty uh, straightforward. I think you could do that on your own. You come up with negative two and a positive one third. So that's the first sort of big way that we solve uh, quadratic equations. Another way that we solve uh, quadratic equations uh, is using a technique called completing the square, but first we need a basic uh, fact here uh, just to be uh, clarified. If we have x squared equals k, uh, then x is equal to plus the square root of k or minus uh, the square root of k. So that's a very basic fact that we're going to use. Uh, now on to completing the uh, square. And I'm only gonna ask you problems uh, where the number in front of our x squared is one. Uh, I don't wanna make it too complicated. Most problems that you see are in this form as it is, but just for being extra sure, let's keep it more simple. Uh, so to solve, uh, x squared plus bx plus c uh, is equal to zero. The first thing we're going to do uh, is we are going to uh, subtract our c value from both sides. We just want the x squared plus the bx. Next thing we're going to do is we're gonna add b squared over four onto uh, both sides. Now what we're doing here is we're actually creating the extra piece that we need to write this left-hand side as a perfect square. What is that perfect square going to be though? We'll see very shortly. 
uh, your right hand side is all just going to be some big constant. B is known, C is known, uh, therefore B squared all over four, uh, and then minus C, that's going to be uh, some constant there. The left-hand side is always, 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 always going to become a perfect square if you have followed steps one and two correctly. The left-hand side is always going to be X plus B over two, that quantity squared. You can FOIL this out and see that x plus b over 2 times it itself is going to give us x squared plus bx plus b squared over 4. So once you've added the b squared over 4 onto uh, both sides, automatically write the left-hand side as x plus b over 2 squared. You're then going to make that substitution. You're going to take the square root of both sides. That will get you plus or minus the square root of something. And then you're going to subtract b over 2 uh, from each side. And that's going to help you get your solutions. So we're going to do this uh, with a uh, sample problem here. x squared minus 8x plus 1 is equal to 0. Just by looking at it, it's not really clear that we can come up with two relatively nice factors uh, for this thing. Uh, factoring doesn't really help us out here because uh, we would need two numbers that would multiply out to positive one and add up to negative eight. Uh, that's seemingly not clearly possible uh, and it really isn't possible. Uh, so, uh, so we need to come up with some other way to factor this thing. Um, or we, uh, we need to do something else to help us find our uh, x values, I should say. Not so much factoring. But I'm going to uh, subtract my c value from both sides. x squared minus 8x is equal to a negative 1. Now is where we actually get into completing our uh, square. Our b value is the number in front of just the x, but including the sign as well. So here my b value is the negative eight. I'm going to take that guy, cut it in half to give me b over two, which is negative four, and then I'm going to square it. And that gives me 16. And that is my b squared over four. Now the reason that I did the b over two is because I'm gonna have to use that in the next step. So I added that 16 onto both sides there, giving me x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals negative 1 plus 16 or 15. That left hand side, we, we said it was x plus b over 2. I'm taking that b over 2 value of negative 4 and I'm making that substitution. So my left-hand side is going to be x plus a negative 4, or x minus 4, that quantity squared, equaling 15. There we go. <laughs> x minus 4, that quantity squared, is equal to 15. So I made that substitution. I made the substitution uh, for my uh, x plus b over 2. Once I've made that substitution, I'm gonna take the square root of both sides. And very shortly, uh, we will be seeing that we have uh, x minus four equals plus the square root of 15, or x minus four equals minus the square root of uh, 15. Now it's really straightforward uh, to solve for x. Uh, in each of these cases, I'm just gonna add four onto both sides in each of these uh, equalities here and we will see that we get 4 plus the square root of 15 or x equals 4 minus uh, the square root of 15 and there's a way that we typically write this all as one thing we write 4 plus or minus uh, the square root of 15 it's another way to write both values at the same time
So that's uh, completing the square. That's a way that you may have to use. Uh, the third way that we can uh, solve a quadratic equation is with the quadratic formula. Um, it's an ugly looking formula, but in a sense, it's perhaps the most friendly in the sense that you can always use this equation uh, and you're guaranteed to come up with uh, the solutions. The main thing is just substituting in the correct values. Here's the quadratic formula. Again, this may be uh, familiar to uh, most of us. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And there's even a, a silly, stupid, corny little song uh, that's tied in with it. X equals negative B plus or minus radical B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Yes, it's dumb. It's so terrible. But frankly, the stupid things are what stick with you. Uh, so that's the uh, goofy, stupid song associated with this uh, formula. As I said, the main difficulty uh, here uh, is just making sure that you're using the correct things for A, B, and C. Um, but also, as I said, it's a guaranteed formula. It works every single time. If you're not sure if you can factor or if you're not comfortable with completing the, uh, the uh, square, you can always just use this formula and it will get you the answers. So here's an example. Uh, 3x squared minus 13x minus 1 is equal to 0. We have the 3x squared. We have 13x, uh, 13x minus 1. It's just, uh, yeah. uh, this is just not the best looking. There's a number in front of the x squared. There's a larger b value there. Let's just not mess around with this. Let's not try to factor. Let's not try to complete the square. We're just going to plug this thing into the uh, quadratic formula. So again, it's ax squared plus bx plus c. The number in front of my x squared is a positive 3. That's my a value. We then have plus a negative 13x which means b is negative 13, and then we have plus a negative one, so c is equal to negative one. So those are the values that I need to use uh, when I substitute into the quadratic formula. So again, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I'm now just gonna substitute values in here. That's going to be minus negative 13, or plus 13, plus or minus the square root of negative 13 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 1, all over 2 times 3. Now we multiply, distribute, whatever. Uh, as we said, minus the minus becomes plus 13 plus or minus square root of negative 13 squared is 169. Uh, negative four times three times negative one is a plus 12. So I have the square root of 169 plus 12 all over six. And that is going to equal 13 plus or minus the square root of 181 all divided by six. Now, what we would do here is if these things were nicer and we had sort of a common factor we could pull out and then cancel out, uh, we would do that. But really, there's not such a nice kind of thing we can do here with this. We do just have to leave our answers uh, in this valid yet ugly kind of looking form. Uh, so this is why we say that it's nice because this is a guaranteed formula that will work every time, uh, but it's ugly because the formula it's, it's, itself is ugly and you can be left with some ugly looking stuff. But now, with these uh, quadratic equations, um, 
how do we know if we have specifically real valued solutions? Uh, and if so, how many? Well, looking at the quadratic formula, it's all based on what's underneath that uh, square root there, that b squared minus 4ac. Um, that guy right there is what's going to tell us uh, if we have real valued answers, uh, and if so, how many. That thing there, uh, that b squared minus 4ac, is called the discriminant. And based on whether this thing is negative, equal to zero, or positive, tells us if we have real, uh, real solutions, and if so, how many. And there's only three cases. We can, either, we can only either have zero, one, or two. So here's our three cases. If b squared minus 4ac is positive, then there are going to be two real solutions. Two uh, real numbers that satisfy the given equation. If b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, uh, then there is going to be one real solution. And if b squared minus 4ac is negative, uh, then we are going to have no real solutions. We are instead going to have uh, two complex uh, valued solutions here. So if we go back to our uh, previous problem, if we were just looking at uh, whether or not we had real valued answers here, uh, we could do that b squared uh, minus 4ac uh, calculation. Uh, we could uh, do uh, negative 13 squared minus 4 times 3 times the negative 1. We'd find uh, that that would be uh, something that is positive, and we would know, okay, we have two real answers uh, to this uh, quadratic equation here. So guys, this concludes our uh, redo of uh, this uh, video here on uh, quadratic equations. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please be sure to uh, reach out to me, uh, send me emails, texts, phone calls, leave voicemails, postcards, whatever you have to do. Otherwise, take it easy.